Okay, this is the 1867 Chickering 33B. While it's on its side, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about the distinctive and, oh, what's the word? Well, the signature beam structure you'll find in the coffin back. It, as you can see, it has horizontal beams that run the length of the piano and what those do is basically run under the struts and the nose bolts for the struts drop straight down into those. The cross members they strengthen the case laterally but they also function as spots where nose bolts from the plate can come down. Every one of those pieces of wood, as you can see by the uh, little spots of tape I stuck on, um, has a bolt in it that goes up to the plate structure at one point or another. So each one of those is in there for plate support as well as making the case rigid. This is pretty much, you know, what you're going to find under one of these. Um, let's see, the, as you can see by the dots of tape I have on the beams, each of these struts serves a dual purpose. It both strengthens the case and by supporting the nose bolts gives the plate um, stability in the up and down direction so all it has to it keeps everything in the plate in compression for all the strength this gives this is a pretty lightweight structure and is I think uh, quite an advancement for its time because they have disposed of the full body console. This is light. This structure is light and vibrant. They've gotten rid of any excess weight. And the other aspect of this chickering beam structure that is not to be missed is the fact that it's all interlocking. Each one of these beams nips into and is nipped into by every beam it crosses. And I'm not sure if it's going to come out, but there is a dowel that secures these together. Let's see if I can feel them. No, I don't, yeah, and there is a dowel in this one that probably plugs into this. Yeah. So this whole system is basically put together like a sailing ship. Being made in Boston, I would assume there were enough ship's carpenters around to make as many pianos as you wanted, so. And I think this is just one of the qualities that made the Chickering the preeminent piano of its era.
One of Steinway's big claims to fame was the uh, one-piece bent rim. Um, but that's not really the beginning of laminations in pianos. On this piano, I'm not sure if it's going to come out, but there are six laminations of, I believe, spruce on the inner rim and five laminations of, I believe, walnut of all woods in the outer rim for this piano. And that bent construction goes from the treble over here to the outer base corner, or the outer nose, however you want to look at it. Um, and it is the only bent structure in the piano. Everything else in the piano is made up of solid chunks of wood. This is very, the system goes all the way back to the Cristofori piano, which also has a single bent side to it. So I want to take a quick look at this floating cutoff bar. It's a good question what these are. You find these in old pianos. Um, in a more modern instrument, that bar would be glued to the case, and it's not. It floats. So... I'm sure it gives some definition to the resonant portion of the board. I'm just curious what to... what they were thinking.